सूर्याय नम ओं सौ सुमाय नम ओं कुं कुजाय नम ओं बुं बुधाय नम ओं गुं गुरव नम ओं शुं शुक्राय नम ओं शं शनाश्वराय नम ओं राम राहव नम ओं कें केतव नम ओं Here, I'm not going to be very much detail. I put this graph about the nakshatras names, and there is the other one that is complementary, so you can have a general understanding of this. And this will start our um, more pragmatic thing. The first chart I did it was a week ago. It was March five. And I established the same time. You're going to see that March 6, same time. March 7, same time. And this is a, um, effort to make you with an example on how this Chandra moon that is in Magana Kshatra, that it starts in Ketu, we will start this karmic period in a way, but in the next day, March 6, because here it's 8, 90%, 97% left of MAGA in the day of 6 March. And in the day of 5 of March, it was 19 left. Now I'm going to bring a new point. We are not always going to start the Mahadasha in the beginning of those seven, 20 years. See, this person started its Mahadasha. If the person was born that precise, precise moment, doesn't matter if it was about to Brazil or anywhere, that person would have this amount of time in the Keto Mahadasha. If the person was born in March 6, on the same time, the Ketu Mahadasha would be at the end. It would be left in only 8.97% left. What does that mean? Up to now, we are believing that I was born in the beginning of that karmic period. This is not true. For example, there is someone I can hear. Um, I was born with those 20 years of Venus resting 16. So my first karmic period was 16 of 20 years of Venus period. This now is just a thing. So you don't go crazy when you see your chart. <gasps> I did not start my, <laughs> my karmic period in the beginning. I'm, I'm not a nice person. Wait, <laughs> that's not the point. Okay. So I have sent these slides for you before. And I took that time to do that. It was not very... Mm, just one second to do that. <laughs> because if you wished to have this, um, this time to look to those tables and say, I don't understand a thing here, but look, maybe I will understand someday. This is just to make a thing that you can go by your own looking if the person is born in the karmic period of a Venus-related nakshatra, the order is going to be this. First Venus, then Sun, then Moon, then Mars, and so on. If the person is born in a Sun-related nakshatra, where are the Sun-related nakshatras? Kritika, Uttarapaguni, Uttarashada. The order is going to be like this. Sun, Moon, Mars, Rahu, Jupiter, Saturn, and so on. If the person is born in a moon-related nakshatra, the order is going to be moon, Mars. And what does that mean? Let's go to the chakra again. If the person is born in this nakshatra, there is Ashwini, or Maga, or Mula, this is going to be related to Ketu, all of those. The following one is going to be related to Venus. Doesn't matter if it's Barani, uh, Purva Paguni, or Purva Shada, and so on. Okay, those nine, 10 charts are only with the purpose that you understand there are nine different ways of 
be incarnated in this karmic roulette. Is this clear? Okay, that effort is that you can see if you know the name of your nakshatra, you're going to find the pattern, the framework of your pattern. If I start on the, um, whatever, Jupiter Mahadasha. The Om Gurave Namah, Om Gurave Namah, Om Gurave Namah, Om Gurave Namah. Om Gurave Namah, Om Gurave Namah.